Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are working on Let It Be and right now we're going to focus on the cover and I, I can't tell you guys enough how much I love this collection. Okay, so I'm going to drag this in. I've got a rough layout and then I'm going to deconstruct it and we're going to glue it all in together. Isn't this exciting? So it's going to have a lot of dimension on it. So I'm going to have a link to these flowers in the description. So as usual, if you click on the show more in the description, the first thing you're going to see is the material list, which will include these flowers and the paper that I'm using. And if you continue to scroll, you'll see the cut list. Okay, so that's all pretty normal stuff. I'm really loving these flowers and I oh, can't tell you how much I like this. Um, I'm not always big on fussy cutting, but this collection really calls for it. So this was just a piece of scrap. Um, you get two of these in your 12 by 12, so I fussy cut um, a second one so I can pop it. Here's one of the beautiful little charms that Julie includes, and that little crown is going to go right there on top of that crown. And then I took my second sheet and fussy cut this um, flower out, and then I just manually used my hand uh, to shape the leaves. I cut them apart so I could create a little bit more texture, and then I inked my edges. Additionally, I added, um, what do I call it, diamond glaze to make these bees dimensional as well as shiny, and then I added three little dots for to make it look like dew. This is also fussy cut from the 12 by 12 collection pack. And I did the same thing here with the diamond glaze. And then I'm going to set aside these flowers and we're going to uh, adjust them until I find what I want. I also added the diamond glaze to um, the bee that was on the page. So fussy cut this also from the second 12 by 12. So what I did on the base um, is I took my 12 by 12 and I cut around um, these elements and you can see on the back where I had cut and then basically I pushed this over the top of this to make it fit on my 8 by 10 album. So my album is actually um, 8 and 1 8 by oh and I just noticed it doesn't fit 8 and 1 8 eight and a quarter by 10 and a quarter, which is a quarter inch smaller than I normally make it, but I was gonna try something different. So if you use the um, the base album build, you're just gonna make the spine and front and back cover a quarter inch shorter. Um, otherwise you can do eight by 10, it's the same thing. But I am gonna to have to trim this. I didn't realize I had uh, left that so large. So that's gonna be the first thing I'm gonna do is I need to take a little bit of height off this. I'm actually going to pause and do that since I've got um, chipboard and two layers to cut through. I'm um, gonna pull in um, my metal ruler and um, mark this and trim it. So it's gonna take me a few minutes. So I thought I was ready and when I come back, we'll start layering. Okay, sorry about the pause there, but I did get it trimmed down, so I'm ready to actually install it on the album. And so I'm going to start by putting the cover down, doing the spine in the back, and then we'll come back and embellish the, the top. But I'm going to start by laying this in, and it looks good. I've trimmed it just right. I'm using the um, Signature Construction uh, black tape from my creative spirit and I've yet to do uh, a video on how to use it. Um, there is a video from my creative spirit showing how to use it and I know some of our uh, customers are using it or have used it in the past so you may see some information on that on our Facebook page and I do have plans at some point to do a recording but I was going through the learning process here and um, I want to get get a better feel for the tape before I show you how I'm using it and um, you know give you some tips on how to how to use it and you know what some of my concerns were it's it's very sticky tape so it, it'll stick back on itself very easily so you got to be careful when you're using it and it tears very easily which is a good thing and a bad thing right it's a double-edged sword so it's really nice that you don't have to have a pair of scissors to cut it when you're ready. Um, but you can uh, unexpectedly tear the tape as well. 
which I did a few times, which is also one of the reasons why I didn't want to record myself using it the first few times until I had a better handle on how it behaves. Okay. So I'm going to burnish this into place. I put two layers of chipboard behind this piece because I really wanted the um, sunflower to stand out. So you can see there's there's some space there. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is we'll focus on the back and the spine as soon as I make sure that this is all attached. It feels funny because there's two layers of chipboard here, so I keep looking at it thinking, why isn't it going down? It's because it's not going to. There's chipboard there. Okay, good, good. That was just holding things up. And you can see there's a gap there from the chipboard. Okay, so for the spine, I've chosen this wonderful pattern, um, which I really like, but I forgot to ink it. So we'll do that real quick. This is um, a six inch strip. Um, you could go all the way across the back, but I wanted to, um, to integrate a second pattern. This is a pretty bold pattern, so I wanted to calm it down a little bit. But I did like it definitely for the spine. Okay, so it's just going to go right here. I'm just pressing this chipboard down in place a little bit better. Okay, so it's going to go right here, and it's going to wrap around, and then I'm going to put something else on the balance. So I'm going to add my tape real quick. Uh, we've got some wide tape here, so that's nice. I like to start with a relatively straight edge. This is my favorite, one of my favorite tools, my tape tear tool, which you can buy in our shop. So I've talked about this before, but um, it's important that you use strips of tape. It allows your paper to stretch a little bit more over the, um, the edge. Now the nice thing about this is I'm only wrapping around one, one side uh, of the spine. So I'm gonna stop short. So I've only got to deal with one uh, side really needing to stretch over and around. And you can't see it, but basically you wind up with a little space between each one of these strips of tape that allows the um, paper to stretch and move a little bit while it gets accustomed to coming around um, the spine and onto the back cover. Okay, I think I'll use fat tape for the balance. Now, my general rule of thumb is, if it's an interactive component, I use tape. In, in this case, this is an interactive component. And if it's static, like a photo mat, or a mat on uh, a pocket page, then I use glue. So all my hinges will have tape, and then my designer paper, which is just flat static on top of an interactive component, um, are held uh, held on with art glitter glue. Okay, I got a little gap here. I think it's narrower than a quarter inch, or maybe it is a quarter inch. If if it is, then I'll just add a little bit of glue. Mm, I can use this. <laughs> Whoops. There we go. Okay, we're going to burnish this. I've kind of trained it around the corner already. I didn't score it, I just was uh, guiding it with my hand and holding it over the edge of the um, album. 
Now, most of you, or a lot of you who've been watching for a while know that um, when you attach uh, anything to the spine with the intent to wrap around, you need to make sure your book is not completely um, open or completely closed. It, it's just too much movement. You're expecting too much from your um, from your designer paper. So what you want to do is you want to get your book to a position where it's about uh, at a 45 degree angle. And then it doesn't have to stretch so much that it tears or to have so much excess that it buckles. So it's kind of that balance. So I like to start by removing what's going to go over um, my corners there and what's going to go on this flat part. And then the rest I'll remove as I go once I've placed it. I've had a particularly challenging day and I'm feeling a little bit fatigued. So I don't always do this, but I'm going to add some glue to my tape to give myself some wiggle time. Just to make sure I get it straight. You don't have to coat it. Basically, the glue creates a little bead over the um, adhesive, and so it's floating on top of your um, album before you press it into place. And so that's what's allowing you to slip it around. I'm looking to center it top to bottom and to get it in straight so that it's coming around the corner giving me the same consistent border top to bottom. Okay, and, I, and while I'm doing that, as you can see, I'm holding it open. I don't think I've ever done this where I've only gone across half of the spine. I think I like it. Okay. Cap. Cap my glue. And then we'll go ahead and pull the rest of the tape off. Then we get to do the fun stuff, decorate the cover. Okay. Okay, I'm going to use uh, my hook tool, pick tool, whatever you want to call it. It's a weeding tool is really what it's from um, a dike or electric cutting machine. That was weird. Let me cut that. When I pulled that quarter inch up, it took some of the designer paper, so I just want to make sure that there's adhesive all the way. Okay, I'm picking it up again before I press it all into place, holding it at about a 45 degree angle. There we go. A little bit of glue. Okay. So the second piece, so 
want to make sure I've got it. I'm checking my orientation. Is going to be these beautiful bees. Now this is also from the 12 by two, yeah, 12 by 12 collection pack. So I need to trim this down to fit. I don't want it to cover so much. So I'm going to mark it, trim it, glue it. All right, I'm going to rough cut it and then I'm going to trim it one more time. What I mean is I probably want to have, um, well, maybe not. Let me think about that. In the meantime, I don't know what I've done with my pencil. And it's buried. Okay, it's a very tight line here. I think I'm gonna keep it that way because I might actually put a sticker here um, or a strip. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. So let's get some ink on this and lay it in. One more time, I'm gonna to check to make sure my orientation is correct. Okay, there we go. Okay, I've got some stuff to put under here to elevate it. Okay, lovely. Okay, so I've got this piece uh, fussy cut from the 12 by 12, two layers of chipboard. It's gonna go right here on top just to give some more dimension. got one layer of chipboard behind the flower. Again, I cut some of these, not all of them, all the way down to the black so that I could add some additional dimension. 
right here I had added my diamond glaze before I realized I was going to layer it again. Okay. And I'm going to do it slightly off so I can get um, even a better visual where you get more of these standing out. But I also want my let it be to be straight. It's hard to believe it's exactly the same as what's underneath it. Just just the curling made it uh, made all the difference. Okay, there we go. All right, I fussy cut this, um, and it's just a single layer at the moment. But I believe I'm going to add some chipboard to that. Before I lose it, I'm going to add my crown. So this is just a cute little crown. It's got some dimension, so I'm going to put a pretty large dab of glue here and then I'm going to try to leave it alone so it'll so it'll grab hold. I've had good luck with um, art glitter glue adhering uh, but you have to be patient. Uh, it does take a long time to dry against the metal. That looks straight to me. Just took out some extra glue. All right, what's next? Okay, so I've got this, which is part of the flower pack, and I'm gonna lay it right on top of this. I think it looks just perfect here, doesn't it? It goes right with this. Actually, I think this is the one I was gonna put here. Yeah, because I curved it up, so it's kind of a little bit of an S shape. So I'm just gonna put a line of glue and follow that. And again, it's metal, so you have to give it a minute. And then once I've got this down, I'm going to go in and put a dot or two to tack this in place. Okay, I'm going to try my best not to lift that and leave it alone. Okay, I'm going to curve this around this way. And these basically become the foundation that I'm going to build my uh, flowers on. I'm going to cut off some of the metal. If I can find my tool. Couldn't find the one I was looking for. I think I've got it packed on the last retreat. But I'm sure I've got something in here. No, I don't. That's interesting. None of these are none of these have um, cutters on it. So I'm just gonna bend it and tuck it under because I want to finish this tonight. Okay, that's gonna go right about there. You could also tape some of this down because it's going to get covered with flowers. That's so cool. It's so cool. This is just a little bit of fussing and moving until I until I'm happy.
I really need to to cut fine on the I was using scissors, which is a big no-no. That's why I did it off camera. <laughs> I need a medium size. Did I bring all my flowers in? I think I did. It's looking pretty good. This guy needs a little help. I'm just going to texturize him a little bit. Okay, so I'm just kind of looking for overall balance. Make sure there's a weight on both uh, the top and the bottom. really need the wire. Okay, I like this, so I'm going to glue it down. I'm going to um, add a stamp here. This is fussy cut from the from the bottom of the 12 by 12 and I've done an L shape here. It's got two layers of chipboard to match the two layers that are here. And then once I get this down, then we can figure out what to do with the rest of these flowers. So I'm trying to avoid a really naked spot here. It's not really naked, but you know what I'm saying um, compared to the rest of what's going on. Okay. See if this is better placed down here. Now I didn't do it, but if you think your book is going to get handled a lot, I would recommend um, covering your flower with some Mod Podge or something like that. Um, just to make it a little bit more durable. Especially if you think kids are going to be handling it. It'll just stiffen it. Um, and I would do front and back.
yeah, it's just too close to this. It doesn't look random enough, so I'm not sure. I don't think I'm going to use that. But I am going to add uh, my leaves, which I fussy cut, inked, and then shaped, just using my hands. And I think this is the largest, yeah. I've got this ridge here. I'm going to cover that up a little bit. I've got another fussy cut flower. What do you guys think? I don't like that. It's too, too much. I really like these. These are smaller. I always like to place my larger ones first. Yeah, I'm liking this, so... You should only have to hold it down, I don't know, 15 seconds maybe. And then last we've got these leaves that we can tuck in for um, more dimension if we need it. I should have shaped these first. They're too perfect. What do you guys think? How's it looking? I like it. I think I'm just about done. So I'm, I think I'm just about done. So I still feel like that looks a little naked, but I'm not sure what to do about it. I don't want to put any more flowers. It would have been nice if this was a little bit lower, but that is just how it worked. Okay, so the other thing I've got are these some additional uh, flowers that were cut. Um, I don't like that. It's the, not the right color yellow. Uh, yeah, see, I think that feels too forced. So I think that's going to be it. And I do think I am going to add I 
I think I like it best this way. So I think I am going to add this here. And I'm going to leave the edges a little free so, um, so it can stay, keep its dimension. And then once the top of this dries, I'll go back and tack it down onto the stamp. What do you guys think? Okay, that's a lot of dimension, looks beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna let everything dry completely. And, um, and then when, when it's completely dry, I will um, put my pages in real quick and we'll be done with this album. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this album. I'm gonna add a little more glue here. I'm really loving this paper. I'm going to do another project with it. Um, I'm inspired by um, Nostalgia, Nostalgia Teak, and I'm not sure I'm saying that right. Um, she did a, uh, a traveler's album, a traveler journal, um, and I'm going to do something like that with this collection. So I can't get enough. All right, everybody. Everybody's going to love this collection. There's just nothing not to like. <laughs> All right, I think that's it. I'm going to try to quit fussing if that's possible. Uh, I may add a little bit more, but for now, this is um, our cover. Um, I'll give you a closer look. So again, these flowers will be listed in um, the description. If you click on the show more, I'll probably tuck them a few more of the leaves in here and there. And then a lot of uh, the dimension comes strictly from fussy cutting the second 12 by 12 and layering it with chipboard. Okay, I'll be back soon, guys. I hope you like it. I'm loving it. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are going to decorate the inside liner of um, our album. So what I've decided to do is um, to do it in quadrants. And so I'm taking an ephemera card front and back and we're going to place them like so. And then I'm gonna use this paper to fill in the gaps. So that's the current plan. I need to do some trim to fit. Um, a little bit of trim to fit to make this work. I think I'm gonna be okay top to bottom. Yeah, um, I am gonna color block, so I'm gonna leave a slight gap here, and then we'll trim these pieces down to fit. So I'm gonna start by putting these in. So you have a nice little journaling spot right here. And then this is just very decorative. Turn these down to fit and we're going to do the same thing on the back side and I'm just going to leave you after I finish this one um, just to keep the video a little bit shorter. It's 
hard to see my pencil mark. Okay, that looks good. I think I need to put a little more glue on that corner. That's more than I wanted. <laughs> by 12 collection pack. Beautiful. There we go. Isn't that fun? I like it. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to repeat the same process over here, but I'm going to call it quits for now. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are going to wrap up on the cover. So the last thing we have to do is to install the pages. So we've got our pages over here ready, and I'm going to verify that they're in order. Page one, two, three, four, five six, seven, and page eight. So yes, everything's in order. I'm gonna start with page one. I need to clear a little space. There we go. We won't need this anymore, but I will need my pick tool. Okay, I'm gonna sit down to do this. Make sure the camera's rolling and it is. I hope you guys are enjoying this album. I love the paper. It's a little tight. Um, it seems what I've learned is that the more interactive elements you put on your page, the tighter this is when you, when you put it on. It still fits, but it's a little bit more snug. So we're, we're on. Good to go. Shoot. Oh, good grief. It's coming off in three pieces. There we go. Lovely. Now there's a piece of tape backing floating around in there somewhere, but that's okay. No problem.
Oh no. There we go. there we go. So that is the end of the cover. So the next time we get back together, I will be doing the, the walkthrough. <laughs>